Hi, welcome back to the Electronics channel. Uh, today is going to be something a little bit different on the channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing a kit build. Um, and a particular kit in question is right here in this box, all the way from the Ukraine. This is an IN12 Nixie Tube clock. Um, now you may have noticed I've got a Nixie Tube voltmeter on my bench already, and I've built my own Nixie clocks in the past. Um, so this is kind of a familiar territory for me, but I'm building this kit uh, for somebody else, a member of my family in fact. Um, so it's a ready to go kit, includes all the circuit boards, all the parts, four Nixie tubes, so it's just going to be an assembly job. Um, so it should in theory be easy, but we're going to have a look at the kit, we're going to put it all together, and hopefully we get a good end result. So let's go to the bench. So we've got the box here that the kit came in. We've got the instructions that came with it, which I've printed out. So I'll put those to one side for a moment. Let's have a look what's in the box. Okay, so packaging. Got some basic instructions on how to use the clock. And we've got oop, Nixie tubes. Got what looks like an Arduino Nano, perhaps. Another module in there. 32K. So that might be a real time clock or something of that sort. Oh, got all the components nicely presented there. Circuit boards. And got some sockets, switches, backup battery. And some other bits and bobs. Got the acrylic case which the clock comes supplied with, and we've got a power lead which is it's like a well, it's an unusually large center diameter on that plug, but it's some kind of DC jack to USB. So I think this is designed to run from a USB power supply. So let's have a look, let's have a look at these tubes. So this is an IN12 tube kit. So these tubes have pins on the back, a bit like an old valve base. Um, and the kit comes with a series of individual pins, which I'm assuming we're going to assemble on the back of here and then solder to a PCB, but we'll find out in a moment when we follow the instructions. Yeah, should look very nice. It's a reasonable sort of digit size on these. Um, let's have a look what size the digit is, because I can't honestly remember. It's around about 15 or 16 millimetres, I would say. So that should be visible from across the room quite easily. Okay, let's see what the instructions tell us. So main PCB first. So let's have a look at this main PCB. like what we need there and this presumably is the display board which we can come to later so Arduino Nano so it is an Arduino Nano we need the optocouplers so here's the Arduino Nano Got the real time clock which put to one side optocouplers Those and the decoder I see. There we go. These are all really nicely labelled, very nicely presented, individually bagged. So a nicely presented kit. So we put all of those to one side for a minute. Get the soldering iron warmed up. So I think the strategy here will be probably to mount the things that are the lowest height first. I would say the ICs and the optocouplers are very similar and smaller than the, the Nano, so we're going to do that, I think. Let's put these out on here. Now 
the 1551, if I remember correctly, because I think this is what I've used in one of my previous Nixie Clock builds, is a relatively high voltage open collector transistor driver, specifically for uh, neon cold cathode tubes like, like Nixie tubes or, or neon indicators. Um, So it's a fairly common part in these kind of kits. Okay, so let's see if we can put these in here. Looks like pin one is there. And then we've got the IC, which I'm going to just crank the legs down a little bit on the mat there. So we've got pin one over here. And we've got the marking here. There are no sockets involved in the building of this kit, so if anything goes wrong, it looks like you've got a bit of a desoldering job on your hands to fix it. But fingers crossed nothing's gonna go wrong. So they all kind of kind of hold their place in there. Put them down on the mat and here we go. And of course I'm using leaded solder because it's much easier and gives a much better result for hand soldering where you haven't got these really tightly controlled processes. So I'll show you the details of this kit. It was purchased from eBay so I'll show you the details of uh, the seller and the the actual item that I bought. Um, price was very reasonable actually, including tubes. I think it was just over fifty pounds, which considering you 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 get a case as well, that seemed like a really good deal. And the fact it's based on Arduino Nano also means it's going to be potentially very hackable which is great. In fact, when I was thinking about buying this, I contacted the seller and said, would it be possible to, uh, to turn off the, uh, the cathode poisoning routine? Because I know that the person I'm giving this to as a gift is probably not going to want the digits doing their, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's kind of roulette effect where it scans through the digits repeatedly just to make sure all the digits have been illuminated um, and that prevents a, a build-up of uh, poisoning on the cathodes so the actual numbers inside the Nixie tube. Um, I don't think that would be welcome in this particular case because it would be a distraction so if you put it somewhere where it's highly visible like near your television set or something then every time it does this cathode poisoning routine you're going to get this noticeable flickering of the display so it's going to catch your eye so I so I asked the guy if uh, it's possible to alter the software such that it only did that during the night and, and he was very very friendly and very communicative and he said yep yeah, sure no problem I'll write some modified code and send it through to you and because it's just an Arduino Nano of course anyone with a PC should be able to update the program in this so you can just send it through I can plug the USB cable in and we'll get an updated software routine on there, you know, in seconds. Uh, and he also said, suggested that I might be able to get hold of the code as well. So if I wanted to have a go at changing anything myself, then uh, in theory I could have a go at playing with it myself. So that might be an interesting experiment for the future. Um, okay, so I'm going to get this Nano into place. So that fits really nicely in there. The holes are just perfectly set up for that. Now, there's nothing about yeah, nothing about spacing that nano off for any reason. You can just crop the leads afterwards. Okay, so here we go. Double check the orientation. Yep. Okay, 
Okay, there we go. Let's crop all the legs off. Okay, that's good. Put those in the bin. Okay. 